Yo. Uh, everything like everything was all right. Like you know, you you're holding up. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make I just wanted to make sure that first before I um yeah, yeah. like did anything. All right. So, um, this interview uh specifically uh it is about Ross. So like all of all of the questions are just like basic informational type stuff. Um, so like I wanted to talk about like. Ross itself, and then, like, you specifically, you know, like, how you picked it up, um, what type, you know, and, and like, stuff like that. It, it's, it's supposed to be pretty basic, um, and then, of course, uh, this is being recorded because I have to submit it to my professor, but she's the only one that's gonna hear it, so, um, so let's, so let's get this started. Um, so my first question, uh, for you, Roshan, is... Uh, before you joined Ross here, um, did you do any, like, other types of, like, formal dancing? Um, no, not specifically. I, I was part of, like, youth group at my temple, and we had, like, cultural programs where we, like, had, like, mini dances, and, like, we had three throughout the year, and throughout those programs, we did, like, a mini, like, a mini dance for it. Mm-hmm. But other than that, there was no, like, actual professional training or anything of that sort. Okay, so then, um, when you came here, then what made you join Ross? So, the sort of, sort of dancing that we did throughout, um, uh, throughout, like, my temple was, like, in a sense, uh, part of, like, Ross, because Ross originally is an Indian traditional, uh, dance that's, like, uh, originated from, like, a thing called Gerba and stuff like that, so, mm. uh, I had, like, a little experience and, like, a little exposure to that, like, throughout high school, and when I heard uh, about, like, there being a collegiate team that, like, you know, performs and, like, competes throughout the nation, I thought that would be something that I could really, like, you know, enjoy and do, so I tried out my freshman year. Right, um, so then, uh, I wanted to segue that into, uh, your freshman year at Ross. Um, so first, uh, like, what was that experience like, uh, just joining it and, you know, like, what did that mean for you? And, um, then by extension, how did you balance, or how did you learn to balance that with, uh, college for the first time? So, uh, when I first joined, I, I was actually really just like, uh, nervous and stuff because I was amongst people like who I never really knew, and people who were older than me, like, all sorts of, like, age groups. And I thought that was very different in terms of, like, uh, like my whole experience in college because I didn't really expect something like that. But mm-hmm. as I slowly, like, started, like, the rest throughout the year and, like, through the season, I got to, like, un- like, you know, get to know everybody on the team better. And, like, it just made my ov- overall freshman year experience that much more, like, enjoyable because I was able to... Uh, get help from like people who I never thought I'd be able to get help from because they helped me out regardless of like just anything Ross related they helped me with like homework or like my school work that I needed because they all took those kind of sorts of like classes and stuff like that so that was one aspect and uh going off that again like socially they helped me a lot because I was uh exposed to new things that I never like did or like heard of before like like before college Mm -hmm. so that kind of helped play a role in like how I was, like, shaped and, like, who I met, like, who the friends I made because Ross has really become a big part of my, like, college experience because I've been on that team since my freshman year. And after my freshman year, I decided to go for captain. And last year, that was my sophomore year, so I became captain. And that really, like, helped push me towards new, like, openings and positions because it helped me develop myself personally as well, like, as a leader, as a person as a whole. And it also, like, Help me just get a better understanding of what Ross was at college. Mm-hmm. All right, so um, I wanted, or I'm gonna segue this to um, talk about like Ross, like uh, as itself, um, both like as an org and um, like the dances that you guys do. So I wanted to ask, um, what are like the origins of the dances that you guys do specifically? The origin itself. So yeah. Um. I don't really know, like, the full detail. I just know it's a traditional dance that, like, originated in India. I want to say Gujarat, which is, like, a state of India. Mm-hmm. And 
I think that kind of speaks better with me because I'm Gujarati, so I'm from Gujarat. So it kind of makes sense that, you know, I joined something like this. But, like, at the same time, I don't really know much more in depth other than that. I just know, like, the basics of it. So there's a there's a portion that we do in part of our routine and stuff, which is more hands-free in terms of, like, the actual dance and dance style. So that is called Gerba. What we do with that is, like, we use more... Uh, that's where it's, like, more traditional in the aspect, like, actual how, like, Ross started out. And then there's the actual Ross part where we use sticks called dandias. And that's more of just a general person being creative and bringing new ideas to the whole, like, dance style itself. Because there's two portions to it, the Gerva, like I mentioned before, and Ross. Mm -hmm. They each have their own style to it, but they're, bought, they're linked together by that one aspect that it's, like, one, like... Uh, one like single like dance stop if that makes sense yeah yeah um so then do you um do you know like specifically when the like ross team here was formed uh by any chance so our ross team Illini ross was originally created in 2001 and it was created by like students just like me who had a passion for something like this like mm -hmm. wanting to get to you know be a part of something bigger than just like a team they wanted to like compete across the nation and stuff like that because there's also teams out there who just like you know dance just for the sake of it and like only at like college related events like on campus but ours is created like for the purpose of competing across the nation getting to like you know get the whole experience of being on a Ross team on campus at like college mm -hmm. okay so that actually perfectly segues into my next question because um I was curious about uh specifically um uh, maybe not from like uh like a board standpoint but just like in general how does the team like operate uh during the season So you kind of want to know like the logistics and stuff behind it Yeah yeah So usually what happens is at the end of a season the captains specifically the senior captains or like the older ones kind of hold, uh, hold interviews for upcoming uh, captains and people who like have interest in doing something like being a captain. And they pick who will be running the team in the mm. day for the season. And then throughout the summer, the captains, the new, the new captains, they would work to put together all the things that go behind making like the actual production. So they figure out who their managers would be. They have interviews for them. They figure out what kind of theme uh, would work well for their actual like uh, competition and their dance. And then they pick out all the songs. They do all the choreo throughout the summer, and they just go about like making sure everything is run smoothly. And then come like August, they'll have tryouts for the incoming freshmen and old old Ross members who maybe you want to join the team again and be a mm -hmm. part of it. So they'll hold tryouts and they'll hold clinics to teach the tryouts and then they'll have the tryouts itself. And then once the team is formed, they will go over the logistics with each and every like person. Be like, oh, this is what we do. This is what we are. This is like how much it will cost. This is like where we'll be going. This is the kind of gist mm -hmm. of like what's going to happen throughout the year on this team. Like basic informational kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, and then come like, Mid September, uh, basically late September, mid September, like around there, they'll start putting together the routine, teaching the newbies and other members the basics of the whole like dance style and everything. And they'll start putting together a uh, taping video, which kind of determines what comps you would go to. So you'd send those taping videos to competitions across the nation in order to be judged to see if you qualify to like be a part of that competition and come compete. And then once that happens, once we find out what comps we're going to, then we actually start progressing on with our actual routine and then mm -hmm. go from there and move on to the actual, like, full routine. And then throughout, like, winter break and all that, we work on setting up all the, like, detailed stuff, like decorations, like props that we would use and, like, gimmicks that we would do for our dance. And then second season comes around, second semester comes around, and that's when we actually go to our comps uh, where they may be, like, you know, for instance, like St. Louis, 
California, Florida, Texas, wherever mm-hmm. it may be. So that's what happens. And then at the end of the season, the whole process repeats over again. We have you know, captains that were just leading the team decide who the next captains are going to be, and then we start the whole process over. All right. Um, if you you... Know, I need part, like in detail, I can obviously let you know. But like that's the basic gist of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that yeah that that explained a, a decent amount. Um, you had said that um, like you you guys actually submit like videos to competitions for invites. So I was wondering. Um, Specifically, like, how do those competitions, like, work themselves? So, um, the competitions themselves have certain guidelines in terms of how they choose what teams go there. The teams that are applying for that comp have to apply within a certain deadline. You have to make sure they're wearing a certain type of color of clothes that's, like, you know, a plain color, like, like visibly noticeable and distinguishes between the guys and the girls on the team. Mm-hmm. So, you know, helps with the formations and stuff. And then they have to wear clothes that don't represent their school because how each competition determines what team gets in or not is based solely on their dancing and how clean their dance may be in terms of, like, the moves, not based on what team it actually is. So there's no bias beyond that if somebody knows, like, a person from this team and that team. And how that works is, say, um, I was on a dance competition here like, part of the competition, and I was also on the team for, like, that, like, campus and, like, that school, I wouldn't be able to judge or see any of the videos because that would be biased towards me because I would maybe recognize somebody on that team, know what team that is exactly, and it would kind of give, like, a disadvantage to other people or other teams because I would kind of get a head start mm-hmm. and a head look on what they're, like, what they're performing, what they have kind of in terms of, like, formations, so yeah. that's how that works. They so like then, so then the uh, like the judges themselves, they're like they're selected purposefully to be like as impartial as possible, is what you're saying? Yes. So okay. These aren't the judges that decide these. These are the people like for like registration purposes in terms of getting into a competition. These are normal like college students who are part of that organization who have that specific role in picking what teams there are. But as for the actual judges who judge the actual, like, routine you're about to perform on stage the day of the actual, program, like, competition, mm-hmm. they are, they're alumni who are, of any school, who have been experienced with the actual dance themselves. So, say they have, like, captainship under their, like, belt. So they have experience in terms of, like, what happens, what they know, and, like, what goes on in the actual routine and, like, the show. And there would be people who have, like, no bias towards, like, who's competing. So, like, say I was a judge and my team was competing at a competition, I would not be allowed to judge at that competition because I would already have bias towards my team. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, So, what, uh, if you could describe, like, the atmosphere at a a typical Ross competition, um, like, what, what would you say it's like? I'd say it's hectic. It's amazing, and it's very entertaining all at the same time. Hectic in the sense that, say you have a job and a position to fulfill on your team, you have to make sure all the things that need to be done are done at a certain time in terms of, like, getting the props ready for your actual show, making sure all your team members arrive safely to the competition. Maybe you fly or, like, you know, travel by a car. And Mm -hmm. make sure you, you yourself are understood on all the rules and regulations that that comp holds in terms of when, like, you have to do a certain thing, what times, like, tech rehearsal, like, actual rehearsal, and stuff like that. That's the hectic portion of it. But what was my second word I said? Sorry. I think you said... Wow, I'm forgetting. I think you said, like, exciting, or... I think I said exciting. It's exciting because you're in an environment filled with people who love that same, like, thing that you do, and that's dancing and Ross, like... It's just exciting seeing all people who care about, like, such a such a dance style just because, like, you know, you're so passionate about it as well and you see all these other people who are passionate about the same thing you are. And it's entertaining because you get to watch all the other people and all the other dance teams perform a routine that they themselves put together and you kind of get a gauge and, like, oh, wow, like, that's something we could have done. Wow, that's something that's really cool, you know? Mm-hmm. I like them. Like, it's, in that sense, that's how it's entertaining. Right. Okay, um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it back um, from competition specifically to practices. Um, 
So could you could you take me like through like what your practice schedule for a typical week is like and then what you guys typically do during your practices? Like I know that uh me, me and Phil were like there for one, but I don't think that counts. No, no, you guys were there for tryouts. So those yeah. are <laughs> okay, so and that then, definitely yeah. doesn't count then. Yeah, those are clinics, and those are more laid back and chill, in a sense, because we don't want to scare the newbies who are trying out or trying to get a gauge of what the competition, or not competition, the dance team really is. Mm-hmm. How actual practice works, once you're on the team, we have set days where we have practices and set times. So usually how it works is we have it on Sunday, Monday, and Wednesdays from 9 to 12, depending on what we need to get done each day. But it's that late because... Everybody has classes, they have other obligations, and nobody has a set schedule that's the same and runs at the same time as mm-hmm. anybody else. So we have it that late. And at each practice, we usually go through and teach them a song. Depending on how much time we have, we teach them a song and the choreo to that song. And we run through that song a few times and make sure that everybody knows going on. And we do that throughout the week, over and over again. And then on days we don't have practice, usually this is the beginning of the year, when people are still fairly, fairly new to the whole course stuff, we have videos due for, like, each new dance and song that we learn. So they kind of have that, like, memory going, and they're engaged in it, and so they kind of get that muscle memory going as well. Right. Yeah. And then come comp season, depending on, like, what comp it is and, like, how well we're doing at that point, we'll have practice, like, every day, basically, but maybe a shorter time. So say a week before the comp actually is, we'd have practice every day for about maybe two hours instead, just going over anything that we need to do, cleaning anything that we might need to clean in terms of moves and choreo, and making sure everybody is like ready and set to go in terms of what they need to do on the actual day of the comp and how they feel. All right. Um, so um, traveling specifically, because um, I know that for most competitions, you guys are um, on the road uh, for most weekends. So I wanted to ask, uh, what's it like traveling so frequently? And um, I guess, how do you like work around that? So traveling usually doesn't happen until either Thursday or Friday before the actual competition, mm-hmm. depending on if we're flying or, like, taking a car. But what we usually do, say, if we're flying, we go to somebody's house in the suburbs, chill there for the night, and then early the next morning, we'll have our flight to a whatever comp, whatever city it may be. We get there, we check in, check into our hotel, and... Uh, just relax until, you know, the set time that whatever, like, the competition starts at. But if we were driving, we'd leave, like, mid-afternoon Friday and get there by the time we need to, like, be there, honestly. And uh, then we'd leave that Sunday morning to come back to campus and make sure everybody's, like, ready to go for the classes on Monday. And the RSO that, like, uh, the RSO office or whatever, like, you know, is in charge of, like, all the offices of, like, all the RSOs mm-hmm. um, gives us a note, too, as well. So say we need to leave on Friday and somebody has classes, we get a dean's note from, like, the, cl- like, from, uh, the dean himself that allows us to, like, you know, miss class because we are, like, a certified RSO on campus. So, like, as like RSO, like, we have the right to do something like this. So we get notes as well, too. So nobody's, like, missing class and missing out on, like, important stuff that they need to for school say Mm -hmm. like we have a competition or something okay um so uh you're uh this is just for like uh fact checking like you're you specifically are like one of the managers currently right i was the manager this year but Uh the new have been decided and i was i'm a captain now but if you have any questions either position i can like fill you in uh yeah a little bit of both is Fine. Okay. So as a manager, my job is, my job consisted of coming to practice whenever I was told to come and just helping them run through practice, like making sure all the captains were like, you know, dancing as well and not like on the side, like telling them what to do because captains obviously need to practice as well. Mm-hmm. And I was just helping them make sure all the formations look clean, all the steps look clean. 
And in terms of fundraising, I was responsible for making sure we had um, money in the account, obviously, by going going around like fundraising as much as we could, holding fundraisers itself, like uh, tostadas on the quad or like selling pizza outside of like 212 and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that was my main job as a manager. And as a captain, my, my jobs are applying to competitions, doing, um, creating choreo, coming up with the theme, making sure we have a costume ready for the actual performance, and finding a DJ who will help make our mix, and also putting together a team by holding tryouts and making sure we have a set team ready to go for an actual competition. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my next question, um, specifically, what are your like favorite memories as a, uh, like as a part of Ross? My favorite memories? Yeah. I, Just anything you can pull mem- from. My favorite memories would have to be whenever we'd have team bondings, we just get together, we'd have food, we'd have drinks, we just have a good time, you know, chilling with the whole team, getting to have, like, a less serious kind of vibe because, you know, I practice things to get serious and, like, you know, the tone's very serious. And this is, like, very informal. You guys can just talk, do whatever you want. Nobody's telling you, like, you have to do this and that. Mm-hmm. Those are the times where I think I had the most fun because everybody was just talking to everybody. It was like a family, basically, rather than a team. And that's how it's been every year for me. My favorite, my actual favorite memory, though, would have to be this year when at our last competition we found out that we were the eighth team to make it to nationals and we got to go to nationals for the first time in 10 years, which mm-hmm. is which has been a great feat for Alina Ross history. So that's something that I will probably remember forever and ever. Yeah, could you uh, speak uh, just a little bit on that? I, I only have a few more questions for you. Um just for like sake of time because <laughs> I'm recording this on my friend's phone so he kind of wants it back <laughs> but um uh, yeah. going to speak more on the whole um what uh, my favorite memory part yeah uh on uh specifically about nationals you know like what was that like okay yeah so um for me that was my favorite memory because that was the day like we like we found out that we were going to go and our team has worked day in and day out to make sure that we would be one of the teams to go because we had a huge chance this year. And ever since my freshman year, all the seniors on the team, all the people above me have always been like, this is the goal. This is the goal that we're trying to reach. And this has always been the goal. And my freshman year, we didn't make it. Of course, we did well, but like it was never there. My senior year, my sophomore year, sorry, uh, we, had, we went for the same goal again. We tried harder and harder this time too, just to make sure everybody was committed to the whole, like, you know, making international idea. Mm-hmm. And we fell short, but we still had a lot of success throughout that year. And this year was the first year in 10 years, like I said, that we actually made it. And I think it was mainly because of, like, how we lined up against every other team and what team we competed against. But nevertheless, like, we made it, and it was probably one of the best moments in the line of our history, for me at least, because... I've been trying since my freshman year to get here, and it finally happened. So you could say, like, I was really, ex- like, excited for that, like, when, mm-hmm. when I found out. And the actual RAS, like, Ross All-Stars, the national competition, yeah. that that was a whole other story. That was, like, unlike any other comp I've been to, and let me tell you, I've been to, like, at least, like, six to nine comps. And this comp was just very well run in terms of everything they had going on for them. The mixer, the part where like all the teams interact with other teams, was just very well run. It was very smooth. They even had a little collaboration dance where all the teams got put together with different teams and team members would come up with their own little choreo and they'd like dance to that on stage right before the actual competition. Mm-hmm. So that kinda that was kinda interesting because it kinda made me feel less nervous about dancing in a sense, and about just, like, the whole competition, because it was kind of scary, to be honest, seeing all these teams go up, like, all these teams are better than us go up against, like, someone like us. Mm-hmm. But that kind of made everything, the whole, like, idea and process that much, like, better, because it just eased me down and calmed me down, and just 
just like the whole experience, like seeing like the teams there was awesome because like I said, like comps, they're just very entertaining. And I love watching each and every team perform because they had something new to bring to the table. Like sure. I see them throughout the whole semester at each comp that we went to or like all the live streams that they would have, but like seeing them live, like the top eight teams, sorry, seven, cause we were the eight, mm-hmm. the top seven perform and bring something new to the table. That's something I'd never seen throughout the semester. It was just a mind boggling experience because I was like, I did not know they could take it any farther than they already have. And then they just proved me wrong again. So that kind of inspired me to, you know, take my team to the next level for like the future and next year, since I'm going to be captain. Mm -hmm. And that was just one of the most like eye opening experiences in a sense, because that kind of showed me like, this is what we need to do. This is where we need to be. If we want to be one of the best. Okay, um, that actually perfectly segues into uh, into my final question that I had for you, which was, um, where do you uh, plan to take the direction of uh, Ross next year, and then where do you hope to see it go in the future? Um, my goal, and I told my co-captains this, the moment we found out we were co-captains, it's the same as it's always been my freshman year, to take this team to Nationals. Sure, we got there this year, but that doesn't mean anything because we can get there again and we can make sure we are the ones to win that like national trophy. Mm-hmm. How I plan to implement that is correct all the mistakes that we've had in the past, all the mistakes I've seen, all the mistakes I've created as a captain in my previous years, and make sure that we don't make the same like mistake that we have right now by just thinking everything out and making sure each captain is held responsible for their own job and their own position that they're supposed to have. What was the second part of the question? Sorry. Um, and just, like, in general, you know, like, where do you hope the team to go in the future? So, by me doing this and implementing this sort of um, atmosphere, like, I hope to inspire others younger than me to kind of, you know, take initiative, like, as I have my sophomore year, mm-hmm. to, uh, I was captain my sophomore year. So, like, take initiative to make sure that they have what it takes and they want to make sure, like, they want to, like, go to RES, not just be another team just that's just out there. Because we've set ourselves up at this high, like, of a level, and we don't want to lose the momentum going on from here. All right. Well, that was, uh, that was all the questions that I have for you. Um, I know you got... Uh, Avengers Endgame to see so I will allow you to uh, enjoy the hell out of that experience because I saw it last night and it's it's so good <laughs> alright alright yeah. don't all right. ruin it for me of course yeah no I, I better stop talking before I start spoiling everything but um yeah no I will uh I will see you uh on Monday when you get back and yep. you know if you need anything